Reinhard von Habsburg's rule was precarious. But his father did leave him with a fairly centralized empire that had been at peace for a long time. The soldiers of Germany and Italy were restless, and Reinhard was all too eager to release that restlessness towards a goal beneficial to himself. To this end, the Emperor set in motion a plan concocted by his father. The Empire's erstwhile main rival, France, had been in decline ever since its succession started being determined by contentious elections. But its current king, Erlouis de Conteville, was in a particularly unstable position. The king had been excommunicated, and he was facing on and off warfare with the king of Lotharingia on his borders. This weak position gave Reinhard the chance to press the claim of Guillaume de Bachaumont, a loyal courtier to the throne of France. Reinhard hoped that this would give him a grateful, loyal and powerful new vassal who would keep his unruly lords in line. The final confrontation between the old rivals of France and the Holy Roman Empire was rather anticlimactic. His unpopularity and ongoing border conflicts meant that King Harlouin of France could only muster some 8,000 men, a fraction of the combined strength of the Holy Roman Empire. The Habsburgs had long since eclipsed their rival, and this war made it plain for the world to see. In just a few months, France's army lay defeated, and Paris had been occupied. Guillaume de Bachaumont was appointed Viceroy of France, and he duly swore fealty to Kaiser Reinhardt. The old empire of Charlemagne had been reunited. Behind the scenes, the incompetent Reinhardt was aided by his brilliant daughter, Ilsa. A woman of many talents, Ilsa was left in charge of the empire when Reinhard traveled to Jerusalem on pilgrimage. She also handled the day-to-day -day business, while Reinhard spent much of his time on pet projects, such as aiding a willing Estonian tribe in their conversion to Catholicism. In his later reign, the emperor became ever more reclusive, spending days reading obscure theological tomes in his library. This aloof and scholarly period led Emperor Reinhardt to develop a strong distaste for the ostentatiousness of the clergy, even openly questioning whether it was appropriate for a priest to hold any worldly office at all. He found many allies in itinerant monks who had sworn vows of holy poverty. These little brothers, known as Fraticelli, had been deemed heretical by the Pope in Rome, but they found a willing ear in the Emperor. It all culminated in a personal unwillingness by Reinhardt to follow any bull by the Pope in Rome, so long as this Pope surrounded himself with wealth and luxury. A schism was looming in the Catholic Church, and the two most powerful men in the Empire, and perhaps in Europe, were at either end of it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 11. I think, of the Habsburg uh, playthrough, and uh, yes, we're back for a bit. Sorry for the uh, <laughs> quite erratic uh, upload schedule that I've had in the past couple of weeks. Uh, summer or spring has begun uh, in the Netherlands, so uh, we've had some days with good weather. And, you know, I, I, I'm sure if you live in a country with a similar climate to mine, you know that sort of late spring, early summer is when pretty much all social events ever are planned, because <laughs> it's the most guarantee of, uh, of good weather. So I've been a bit busy, but uh, last episode we uh, ended on a bit of a cliffhanger, or not a bit of a cliffhanger, qu quite a massive cliffhanger in fact, because old Kaiser Reinhardt the missionary has switched to the Fraticelli faith. Uh, we are probably one of the only <laughs> Fraticelli rulers in the world. We have uh, angered Pretty much all of our vessels, although they don't hate me as much as they should, based on what we just did, <laughs> which is uh, to uh, get uh, get rid of our Catholic faith. But at least uh, the Cardinal of Salzburg still likes us, and a few other uh, a few other of our vessels as well. It seems the King of France, at least, uh, has joined us. The Vice Ren of Burgundy has joined us. I think. Yeah, so some of the more powerful vessels in the realm have joined us, so that hopefully we'll keep our realm together. Let's see. All right, but, uh, well, I think this might be, uh, sorry to say, but this might be the last episode of, the, of this series. Because I feel like we've accomplished our goal quite well. We have uh, we have re-established uh, Char Charlemagne's empire. And I think, um, well, let's see if there's anything else we can do. Maybe grab Sicily, maybe even grab the Byzantine Empire. Uh, <laughs> or something like, something weird like that. 
or Castille. But after that, I uh, I think I might just uh, make a time lapse of this series because I haven't done any, done one of those in quite a bit. So uh, I might just uh, turn on the old uh, recording overnight and uh, see what uh, the realm looks like after a few centuries because that's always fun. Uh, but in the meantime, what are we going to do? Well, let's have a look at Kaisersburg. Can we upgrade that any further? Nope, but we can still upgrade Rotenburg, which is a castle we la grabbed last time. The hospital at Kaisersburg, can we still upgrade that? Nope, not at the moment. We need uh, construction 4. Can we get that? Nope. Alright. Um, what was I going to do? I was going to have a look at uh, any further avenues for expansion. I guess Castilla would be a pretty natural one. Let's see. Oh, there's a, there's, a, there's a girl on the throne. Oh, that is good news, because that means uh, that we can press weak claims. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Anybody who is willing to join us? You, Luis, Luis Jimena, or Enrique Jimena, Prince of Galicia. Uh, I guess Luis. Luis, my guy, welcome to the Habsburg Empire. Uh, I don't, I don't have much land left to give you. I guess maybe we can try to imprison somebody. King of Poland. I guess we could imprison the King of Poland. <laughs> uh, he will probably revolt. But do I care? Because I want Poland eventually to become Fraticelli. Or I could do the King of Hungary. Uh, who doesn't mind me, actually? I might be able to persuade this man to convert. But we won't do the King of uh, King of Hungary, because he likes us now. The King of Poland, sure. But this might actually end up being a massive revolt. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure a lot of my vessels don't like me. So let's see how this fares in prison. So far, it's just Poland. That's good news, indeed. Uh, let's uh, raise up our troops in Kaisersburg. Yeah, our vessels can do it again. We have 7,500 uh, brave knights. Uh, if you guys remember, we, uh, we upgraded that retinue to a ridiculous degree last time. This Albert has trouble making friends up. Milan, fine, whatever. Um, I think he's not being joined by many people. Is Croatia was already independent, right? They're not fighting me? No, so it's just Poland. Okay, 25k troops should be plenty. Let's head over to Poland. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of speed 5 right now because, well, we've reached a point... Uh, this, this is where I usually... This, this, this is why I say this is the last episode. We've reached a point where we're... Uh, we're so powerful that we will be we, 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 we are winning basically every war that we're fighting. But the only thing that can really threaten us is a big civil war. Because there's pretty much no other country on earth that is <laughs> as strong as us. Uh, maybe the Seljuks? No, not even the Seljuks. Byzantines? Nope. Because we have like 70,000, so we have doubled the army of the Seljuks. We can have a look in our ledger, actually. It is the last episode, so this is the time to look at all the stats, right? Religions. I mean, the Faticelli are not doing too well, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Where are they? Here. One Faticelli province. A single Faticelli province in the world. <laughs> Where's the highest realm size? Must be me, right? Yeah. Oh, you! Oh man, <laughs> I have like double the realm size of the Seljuks. I'm incredibly powerful. I have three times the, the realm size of the Byzantines. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we are ready to call this series, I think, because it's we're so powerful right now. Although it might still all break apart because we switch religions. Where's the biggest army? Must be us, right? Yeah, we were double the army of the Seljuks. Bihar also has 30k apparently. England has 13k. Yeah, we, we got this. We got this. Uh, there is the army of Poland, and it is now gone. <laughs> That's not quite gone. It will be soon, though. There we go. It's gone. Our court chaplain died. Uh, oh, my nephew has converted to Faticelli. That's great. Let's continue to uh, convert Kaisersburg. That is important. At least we want what? Oh, sure. We will go to Jerusalem, I guess. The last time the uh, the crusade. Um, ended up failing. He didn't end up gathering enough support. But I guess we could have another another go. It would be a nice point to leave it uh, if we win the crusade, because then the AI will have a ton of money. So hopefully they won't immediately <laughs> just just destroy all of our legacy. Thank you very much, my guy. You have lost the war. Um, I want to grab some land from you. Uh, oh, is this... Is, oh, did 3,000 horses died? My god. That's gonna cost us a ton of money. Yeah, this is the same. Like I say, I say every time I work with the retinue, it's really not worth it to have a retinue. We can afford it right now. 
but it's gonna cost us now like hundreds of gold to replenish these uh, these horses and so it's not really worth it crusade beneficiary not selected oh at least we have some people who are pledging to join the crusade uh, we cannot select the beneficiary so i guess <laughs> i guess i will grab jerusalem for myself um but the reason why we grabbed this guy is because we want to revoke some land from him uh, let's revoke the Kingdom of Poland, and let's revoke... Hopefully we can revoke something else. We can, okay. The game is sometimes a bit wonky about that. I guess Nuremberg? Sure. Can we revoke something else from you? No. Uh, in that case, we want your conversion, please. And we will give Nuremberg to our new friend. The claimant to the Kingdom of Castile. Where is he? Where is our boy? Here, Luis, Prince of Castile. Um, Alright. Uh, let's give you some land. Here have the uh, County of Nuremberg. There you go. And now, hopefully, we can not pressure claim. Oh, we have raised army levies, all right. Uh, I think we can just keep going, right? The crusade is still a ways off. Oh, it's only a year off. I guess we could wait for that. I think we can press this claim later. Who is my heir right now? Radboot. Are we losing the imperial title still? No, we're not. Everybody's voting for Radboot. That's good, that's good news. Uh, Ida is still training Andreas. That's good. This guy is my sort of preferred successor. So, oh yeah, and we now also have the Kingdom of Poland, so we should give that, that out to a new vice royalty, uh, as, as, a, as a vice royalty. Um, let's see who ha who is deserving of this vice royalty. Mm -hmm. This man has twenty diplomacy. Um, yeah, I suppose. I suppose. Here, my guy. Have the vice royalty of Poland. Hope you enjoy. And I hope you will now convert it as well. You will. Great. Good stuff. Okay, so we are securing our reign a little bit. I am quite surprised that there's not more factions, to be honest. I think people just fear me or something. These factions are really not that bad. 40%. We count Dietrich. Okay. Great holy war for Germany. <laughs> the mighty first Vaidila... Arnmoth has decided that it's time to teach Kaiser Reinhardt of the Holy Roman Empire and the believers in the dead crucified God another lesson in humility. What do you mean another? All three Romuva men are decided are invited to partake in the scouring of the Kingdom of Germany. DFS is with us. Okay, there can't be that many, right? Although it is a crusade, so it, it probably gets spawn troops. But there's barely any Romuvan pagans. <laughs> I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. I think maybe our retinue can handle these guys. This, uh, the the, the removing crusade. So I will keep my retinue in, uh, in 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 my land for now while we wait for this crusade to either fail or not. Uh, we get a claim on the grand city of Venezia. Great stuff. All right. So let's uh, put you on statecraft because we want our uh, vessel to like us a bit more. Sixty-one days. All right. I'm no longer zealous. We're literally going on a crusade. Uh, I know. This is this is the time to be zealous, man. Deus Fooled! Okay, great. It's it's going. It's not failing. That's good news. Deus Fooled. Crusade for Jerusalem. Let's go. Let's go, people. It's time to do some crusading. It is time to do some crusading. Who are we fighting? Oh, the Sultan, the, the Sultan of uh, Persia himself. Oh, there's 15,000 Persian troops down here. <laughs> uh, but we will, I guess, go to Jerusalem and lose a lot of our men to attrition. But hey, uh, I guess just split up the army. Uh, you guys, stick around here. So what is going on with the Romuvan Crusade? Are you guys in my land? I guess there's some. Can you guys handle these Romuvan Raiders? Uh, I don't want them in my land. Get out of here. That's already 15% for this. <laughs> for the Romuvan Crusade. Yeah, we got this. The it, it seems that the Persians are not doing well. He still has 24,000 levies somewhere. I guess he's doing fine. There's 4,000, I guess, removants in my land. Let's let's kick their ass. Make him a pro proper Fetticelli Christian. Yes, please. Let's kick this guy's ass. 50% already in the removing crusade. We'll be fine. That's a good plus 10% uh, moral authority that we can really use. Because we're not that high. Cologne, I guess, is now fully controlled. Rome is, isn't, so we might want to revoke Rome at some point. I might revoke that and give that to our our Pope. Although I want our Pope to be our vessel. 
I guess I could... Mm, so I, I think my... My Pope has a claim on... No, he doesn't have a claim on the on, on Rome itself. Okay. Hmm. I'm because I want I want the Fraticelli Pope in Rome, but I also want him to be my vessel. And I think him being my vessel is kind of more important than uh, than him being in Rome or not. Although it does give us minus five uh, moral authority that it's not fully Fraticelli, but hey. Where is his army? Oh yeah, there's there's some people there. I guess we can send one of our armies. Let's put some uh, some people uh, in charge here. Because uh, we haven't really put commanders in all our armies. And you, that's, 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 a, that's a rookie mistake, I guess. But we outnumber him so much. So I'm not I'm not really worried. So that's why I'm being a bit uh, loosey-goosey about this. Well, I'd like to think I'm a pretty <laughs> loosey-goosey person in general. There's no need to take life very seriously, you know. I'll get over it eventually. 89 dead. Bless that's passed. Here we go. Here's the Persian army. Let's fight them. And there we go. Oh, that barely did anything. Why didn't that do anything? 2%. That's not a lot. I guess it's only 5,000 troops. Uh, you guys continue occupying the rest of Jerusalem. I guess this crusade is completely le leaning on me. So I'm like the only decent-ish ruler that's joining, right? Yeah, so there's a duke. Oh, the pope. Oh, that's, but the pope has no army, though. So the duke of the Duchess of Normandy. Oh, the duke of Normandy, I guess, is is in this as well. They are apparently Fraticelli. Good going, good going, my man. You are Fraticelli. Very good. This is like the only other guy in this crusade right now. Oh, hey. <laughs> Why is this my land now? <laughs> Who conquered this? Duchy of Damietta. Kingdom of France. Okay, I guess the Kingdom of France conquered the duchy in, in Egypt. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, I guess. You do you, buddy. I'm not judging. I'm pretty impressed, actually. I mean, this guy's not doing well. <laughs> Look at all these wars. <laughs> There's a decadence revolt. Yeah. You can take this crusade, lads. You can take it. Um, is, this, is this a crusader kingdom of Egypt? It is. This is a Catholic kingdom. Muslims are not doing... Very well, I think. No, <laughs> the old Near East is Catholic. Wanted to be Fraticelli, though. The one true faith. We said for Jerusalem has come to an end as he has been overthrown. The Christian faithful will be disappointed. Oh, that's dumb. I hate that. Like, why would we care that he's overthrown? We would just continue fighting, right? Oh, I guess, I, I, I guess it completely broke apart. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, okay, the Seljuk Empire has com been completely blown apart. Oh well. <laughs> I bless it as What does that do for our moral authority then? Nothing. Okay, that sucks. That sucks. But I guess I guess it's fine. I guess we broke the back of the Seljuks. I would have preferred to have a Fraticelli King of Jerusalem though. That would have been cool. I'm crossing the courtyard, barely taking notice of the children playing in one corner. Then suddenly I spot the rock flying through the air. Am I in this trajectory? I cannot tell. My depth perception is not what it used to be, because I have one eye. Attempt to catch the rock. 60%. Throw yourself at the ground. Yeah, let's throw myself at the ground. I don't want to die by a rock. As I make eye contact with the ground, I can hear the thud of the rock landing several yards away. The people present do their best not to laugh, but a few suppressed chortles still reach my ears. I try my best to hide my embarrassment behind an angry scowl as I stumble back onto my feet, but I fear my red ears betray me. Never do that again, Giselbert, you, you senseless child. That's a neat little event, because I'm one-eyed, right? My depth perception... Depth... 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 Depth perception? It's not what it used to be. I've talked about this before, but anything with a TH sound is difficult for Dutch people. Yeah, that's the Dutch accent, like, the, the TH sounds are always mispronounced. Oh, Vice Royalty of Burgundy is no longer considered a de jure part of the Empire of Francia. And the Papal States also not. So that is the, the original sort of core kingdom of the uh, the Habsburgs is now in under the Holy Roman Empire. Italia will be here soon as well. As will Hungary, as will Poland, as will France eventually. Very, very nice. Very nice indeed. Yes. So that's a shame that we didn't win that crusade, but uh, you can't win them all, I guess. 
I need no help. This war will soon be won. I really don't need help. Let's get rid of these removals in my land. I think these days have really helped me getting Bedrich to know and appreciate me better. All right, we can do a plus 20 for Diligent. I think that should be enough to demand religious conversion. Must be at peace. Okay. That's dumb. It's not another one of those weird like, balancing rules. Like, why, why would I need to be at peace to ask somebody to become my faith? Why can't I do that while at war? Like, that doesn't make sense. Um, 98%. Alrighty. Controls Germany. Yeah, so we just need to, keep, to, to hold off. Keep this for like a, a few more months. 100%. Okay, great stuff. The Great Holy War is over. We are totally beaten. You removing pagans, get out of my land. I guess now I can ask this guy to go... Oh. Why do you hate me now, suddenly? Oh, I guess the... Uh, okay, fine. Here you go. Uh, please become Vaticelli, if you don't mind. Thank you very much. We're at 65% moral, moral authority, which is pretty neat. It's not perfect, but it's it's it's, it's something. I could, I guess, try to go for... Uh, oh, yeah, right. Before I forget, we had another claim, right? Uh, claim Castilla. This guy. Uh, okay, so he will just get the duchy? No, the kingdom. But none, none of the other kingdoms, I guess. You also do holy wars, apparently. Uh, okay, th because this is like seven kingdoms, right? In Aragon. Hmm. Hmm. In that case, I would prefer to have Aragon, I guess. That's at least near my borders. Sure, we can do that. Our vessels have rested up, more or less. People, we have another war to do. Please, <laughs> this is a war-heavy episode, but what else am I going to do, right? So much revolt going on in our land. So many revolts. Which makes sense, I guess. We are switching faith. We're pretty close to high crown authority, actually. I, I had expected that us switching faiths would be a complete disaster. Like, I, w <laughs> I was thinking, like, okay, this, this is going to be terrible because everybody will hate us, so there will be constant revolts, but it's really not that bad so far. I guess it, I guess it is still Christianity, and it's not that far removed from uh, Catholicism. We're only sort of critical for the clergy, ag ag against the clergy. And that is honestly not a uh, very unique thing to be in the medieval times. Like, people have this this tendency to view the medieval uh, period as a time when there was no room for sort of being critical about the faith. But that really didn't come fully uh, until sort of the religious wars of the Protestants and the uh, versus the Catholics in like the 16th, 17th centuries. Before that, there was like it was a, it was a quite broad church. Like if you look at, for example, religious practices in Ireland, it was almost tribal for a long time, and it was still Catholic, considered Catholic. So uh, there was there was there was some room for debate, even in medieval Christianity. Uh, though of course you shouldn't stray too far from sort of the uh, the main path. Like for example, um, uh, something that uh, that they were uh, concerned with a lot was uh, Trinitarianism. Or anti anti Trinitarianism, which is that you deny sort of the the divinity of the Holy Trinity, so the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, uh, and instead say, okay, the Father is better than the Son and the Holy Ghost, uh, or or something like that. Uh, that was a big deal, uh, so that was one of the lines that you did not cross. But uh, there was a lot of criticism about uh, about the ostentatiousness of, and the corruption of the clergy, and uh, you had Saint Francis of Assisi in the 1270s and and some other like monk orders who, who, who sort of were to an extent started to get back to sort of the what they perceived to be the origin of, of Christianity. Uh, so th th there was quite some criticism. Like you had the, 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 the Lollards in England who were sort of proto-Protestants. You had the Hussites in, uh, in Bohemia. That's all a bit later, but that's still well before the actual sort of Reformation. And in the Reformation, uh, like Catholicism was much more sort of delineated, de delineated, and you really had to confirm to a very specific set of points uh, in order to uh, to be considered Catholic. Like there was, uh, yeah, there were more heresies. That's more or less right. I'm not like a theologian or anything, but uh, that's 
Ooh, okay, we found a sword in the sky. It should go to the church. Let's make a legendary blade out of it. 29%. Alrighty. Hey, Kaiser's book was converted to the Fraticelli faith. 15 piety. Great stuff. I think it's the first province in the empire to be converted, right? Hmm, Catholic, Catholic. I think it might be. Great stuff, though. Let's continue with that, my uh, nephew. Mm, Basel, let's let's go to the to the Habsburg, right? Let's convince our brethren down in our ancestral castle to follow the uh, righteous faith. Zaragoza. I'm gonna storm this place. A level six or above. Okay, I guess I can't. That's also why I don't play late game much because you, you are. It's much harder to siege stuff. You can't you can't you can't really storm anything anymore. So that makes that make, that that means that makes wars quite boring to play, even though it's realistic, I guess. 95, 97. Oh, nearly done. 100 percent. All right. Please give me the kingdom of Aragon. Thank you. We have expanded a little bit. I think this is probably the last point of expansion we still needed to do to fully sort of claim reclaim uh, Charlemagne's heresy uh, he heresy Charlemagne's legacy so we are happy with that why did you get out of here get out of my land why who are you even king of Valencia why can't we declare war on you hmm I don't understand oh well uh, I do want this guy to become Fraticelli, though. Yeah. Please join me in the faith. The true faith. We are slowly but surely crawling up the, um, the Fraticelli faith from the gutters. Uh, I would like to control Santiago as well. Which is like here, right? Or England, like Canterbury. I can probably take Eng England. If, if there's a good claimant. Mm -hmm. Magnus of Godwin is a strong claim. Sure, buddy. Get over to my court. We don't have any <clears throat> land to give you right now. We would need to arrange uh, 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 something like that. Mm. Oh, yeah, I, I have a claim on uh, Venice, actually. I'm, I'm jumping all over the place, but hey. Claim Venezia. Uh, let's do it. Let's just do that. Um, let's get some, some ships. Some ships going. And let's get our uh, our faithful vessels to join us over here in Treviso. Storm Venice. There we go. 90%. 27%. This is so anticlimactic. <laughs> this is why I don't really like playing as big blobs, you know, because it's, it's less fun, because it's, it's, it's too easy. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it can suddenly... So that, that's the fun thing about TK2. I guess it can suddenly become hard. Like, if you... If you actually have a big revolt, you can be suddenly in a big amount of trouble. But I think uh, I think we're fine. Where's Venice's army? Oh, they're down here. What are you doing there, bros? Venetian bros, get out of here. Get out of my land. It's my land. It's my piece of Egypt. And thank you very much for your city. <laughs> Easy as that, ladies and gentlemen. Easy as that. We have now conquered Venice. Uh, let's get rid of these fleets. Yep. Okay. So Venice is ours. Who should we give it to? Oh yeah, we want to we want to give it to the guy who controls England, right? We can grab England. We can go after England. <laughs> this is a very war-heavy episode. But uh, my vessels hate me, as yeah, some of them do. I guess we can wait a bit for this to calm down. Otherwise, people might revolt. But uh, we can give our friend uh, Magnus of Godwin. I can give him the... Uh, well, we do want your conversion, by the way, uh, my, my guy. Well, I, I guess if we give you Venice, you will convert. You will you will be convinced to convert. Uh, here, Venetia, my friend. You better convert now. Oh, he's Lord Mayor, damn it. Can we, no, we can press his claim now, probably, because he's a Lord Mayor. Oh, no, we can. We can. Also, it's going to be the Republic of England, I guess. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, dangerous factions. Okay, let's let's have our vessels... Uh, calm down a bit here. Alright, that's the end of my vessels hating me. We, we just 
put it on speed five for a couple of years because <laughs> I, uh, like I said, this is probably going to be the last episode. So I just want to end on a bang by conquering England. <laughs> I feel like that's a, that, that would be a nice place to end it, right? So vessels, please uh, rally around me one last time while we cross the channel to uh, conquer the Emerald Isle. No, not the Emerald Isle. What, what did you call Britain? The island of Britain, I guess. Claim England. There we go. All right, people. One last, one more time into, into once more into the breach, as the phrasing goes. Uh, let's conquer England for our faith. Uh, let's also have Canterbury under the uh, grasp of the Fraticelli faith. Hopefully, that will be that will mean it's strong enough to actually start competing with Catholicism. I, I think it might already have. No, more authority of Catholicism is still 100%. Catholicism is kind of overpowered in this game, to be honest. But hey, <laughs> I guess it makes sense. And it's like my vessels are constantly revolting. Like, it's a mess. It's a mess. There's also an adventure with Red coming in a few months, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I don't think he will have that much, that many, uh, that many troops. I've been approached by several influential burger families. They want to establish the Hanseatic League. Sure. Cool. The Hansa. The Hansa is formed. The Hanseatic League. Yeah, that was a very interesting organization. I never really liked the way it was. It, it's portrayed in like CK and also in um, in uh, in EU4. Because it was never really a country. Like, it was just sort of a loose association of merchants. And some of those merchants were... Like, some of those merchants' confederations also were in, in control of cities. But it wasn't really like... Like a, a government or anything, like it's just loose association. So, like they they banded together to sort of hunt pirates and to secure their passage through the uh, the Kattegat and the Sond here. Um, so, for those sort of specific reasons, they would gather. But uh, like they were mostly just merchants, so it was never really a state. And they were also like, like for example, in EU4, you have like three cities that are under the Hanseatic sort of control. Um, but like. In real life, for example, there was the town of Kampen, uh, Deventer, a couple of other uh, cities in the Netherlands that were Hansa cities, and that meant that there was a Hanseatic office there. Like, and some some cities like listened to the Hansas. Uh, in some cities, it was only like partial, like only a few merchants. So it's it, it's more sort of a sort of a trade company, more or less, like a militarized trade company, more or less. And I think I think you can sort of see it like that. Uh, but hey. Uh, we're not here to talk about the Hanseatic League, we're here to conquer England. So let's do that. Let's head over to London. This is going to be the culmination of centuries of uh, Habsburg domination. We have almost occupied London. 19%. Where's his army? Here they are. There's only 1,500 people. Stormy place. Oh, here come the uh, adventurers. I haven't really looked at the size of this army. 30k, okay, that's that's actually decent. Storm this place, we're at 58%. Where's, where's the English army? Where's your army, bro? Alexandria. Why are you guys always going for Egypt? Like, <laughs> just go for my mainland, you know? I don't want to sail all the way over to Egypt. Oh well. Give me England. J just, 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 just give me England, man. That's all I'm asking. It's not a lot, right? Some raiders, and we have down here. Oh, it's only ten. Oh no, it's, it's like fifteen thousand. Okay, we will, we will we will we will head over there soon. Uh, can we win the war against England before that? Well, I think we might be we might be able to. But the Faticelli faith is now spreading rather quickly. Actually, you can barely tell, but if you look here, so this is Faticelli, 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 spreading rather quickly. If I if I, for example, do like this. So all the blue provinces are now Faticelli, which is good news. 91%. All right, welcome. You are our court chaplain now. Please continue converting what you can. Because we want the world to see the true, uh, the true faith. We want to convert everybody to the true faith. Storm the place, 95%. We're almost done conquering England. Yeah, so I'm doing this quite fast because we were going to win, you know. It's, it's a matter of time. 100%. Thank you very much. All right. The Merchant League of England. <laughs> it's because we gave him Venice. So it's a republic now, I suppose. 
Oh well. <laughs> That's a bit weird. But hey, we have England, so we have another good 5% of moral authority. Yeah, the only side of Canterbury is now in a partial control. Santiago will be next, and then it will be quite a while before uh, they are actually ruled by proper Fraticelli men. Uh, let's head down to the uh, Egyptian outer provinces and get, get rid of the uh, the usurpers there, or the attempted usurpers anyway. 50,000 troops against 10,000, there we go. 55%, where's the rest of his army then? Oh, there's some more people. Okay, we will, we will head back north, I guess, then. Count Andreas of Ulm is the successor now. I hope people will vote for him. Oh, they will. Great. I rule in my realm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna give you papal authority over my the appointment of my preacher, preachers, man. What are you even doing? Aren't you supposed to be just a priest? Like, we are Fraticelli, right? Storm. Storm. 55%. 100%, okay, finally. Thank you. Execute this man. Mm -hmm. Oh, tyrannical. What? Really? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, well. And let's get rid of our levies and our vessel levies. Okay, we're at peace again. Uh, ah, <laughs> yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I nearly forgot we conquered England. But we, we conquered England. <laughs> Look at the size of this unit. We are truly the masters of Europe. Uh, none can oppose us, none will oppose us. The Seljuks are only Muslim rivals have completely fallen apart this episode. We have not won a crusade, but we were pretty close. We have conquered uh, Aragon. We have uh, strengthened the Fraticelli faith. Uh, we are now at 83% moral authority. We have controlled three out of five of the Catholic holy sites, and uh, we could probably easily take Santiago as well. And then if there's going to be another crusade against Jerusalem, we will take that as well. So I think uh, Fraticelli is on the way up. We have secured our election. Reinhardt is now 70 years old, and it will be succeeded, hopefully, if all goes well, by his grandson, the Count of Ulm, who is by all accounts a pretty decent ruler, even if he's not, actually, <laughs> can we, even if he's not Fraticelli. <laughs> so this might be the end of the Fraticelli part of the Habsburg uh, rulers ship, but I, I doubt it will be the end of the actual Habsburg rulership, but we will see. I might, uh, like I said, do a time lapse. And after that, I'm not quite sure uh, what I'm going to do. There might be a long hiatus, actually. Um, so uh, pre be prepared for that, because I'm, I'm going on holiday to Japan in, uh, in May, early May. And I'm not quite sure if I will start a series before that. So there might be a couple of weeks of hiatus, or I might just do a little sort of easier to edit uh, pre-recorded series um, which uh, I, I will still be able to view in Japan uh, so if you guys uh, have enjoyed sort of High Lords and, and, and the other multiplayer series that I did with uh, Meteor and Salt and um, Orphan and Warlord uh, then have a look in the Discord uh, I put something in the announcements uh, uh, chapter of us watching the first three episodes of the Fallout series like a Fallout uh, Amazon series which is actually really good so you should have a watch uh, but it's kind of like some commentary tracks of those first three episodes. So if you enjoyed us screwing around, like <laughs> if you enjoyed like the, the plan episode and a couple of other episodes of the multiplayer series where we didn't really play CK3 but just talked, <laughs> then have a look at those. Uh, they're, they're fun to watch. Uh, I can't put them on YouTube, obviously, because uh, copyright. But uh, have, a watch at, uh, have, have a look at those. Um, so, yeah. Uh, see you next time. I will, like I said, do another time this episode, which should be up later this week. And after that, there might be a big hiatus. So uh, be prepared. And uh, thank you for your patience. And I hope you guys are, uh, enjoyed this series. I certainly have. It has gone a lot better and more smoothly than I thought. Because we're only like 120 years in. And look at how much we conquered already. <laughs> I guess I'm getting pretty good at this game after uh, several thousand hours. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.